Hi there, Death of M13 here. We're doing some new this is Dwarf Fortresses on Steam, and it's really easy to play. It's perhaps even easier than the Lazy Noob Pack. Which if you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. It's how lazy people used to play Dwarf Fortress. Um, we've got graphics packs and mouse integration and all kinds of wonderful things. The game has still got a little... Well, a lot of jank in it, but it always will. It's Dwarf Fortress. That's part of the fun. But if you want to know what all the fuss is about, and are curious about things, I have collected quite a bit of Dwarf Fortress information in my catacomb-like cavernous brain, and uh, I'll share some of it with you. We'll do a little newbie fort, and we'll have some. We'll have a good time. We'll. Uh, I've got some. Twitch people here with me eventually, so <clears throat> I'll show you how to get started in this. Uh, there are some mods. I wouldn't worry about that to start with. Um, you can have a lot of fun with mods. There's some good stuff already been made. Oh, sweet. <clears throat> Sorry, phone stuff. So we're going to get on the create new world, and one of the first things you wanted to do is you want to make that son of a bitch a little bit smaller. Hey, Blade and Tull, how you guys doing? Um, make the world a little smaller. It makes your life a little easier. You can generate your worlds faster. The worlds generate pretty fast now. Uh, mineral occur occurrence. If you're starting out, you can play with everywhere, but the number of minerals in the game can be kind of overwhelming. Feel free to tone that down a little bit. I think the original default was sparse or at least frequent. I like frequent. <clears throat> um, the rest of this, you can just kind of leave medium. There are more in-depth tutorials on, on what all this stuff does, and some of that is, a uh, some of them are pretty self-explanatory. This is the number of great beasts that are going to be in your world. Uh, and the longer your world lives, the more of them will be killed by adventurers and forts and things like that. So, if you want to run into dragons and titans and stuff like that, which is fun, crank that number up and have a young world. But, uh, and there's even more you can do. Like, I've actually made a world that, uh, <coughs> I, uh, from I think it's Twisted Logic Gaming. I'll, I'll put his actual uh, thing in the video description because I've gotten some really good tutorials from him. He does some in-depth stuff on fluid dynamics and military creation and stuff like that. Um, but he also has a great video for how to world gen volcanoes, which is great. But we just want basic options. Uh, I believe it's going to be your rarer materials played, like how often you have economic stone and things like that. I don't know the exact specifics on your mineral freak occurrences, because you're going to have rocks everywhere, regardless. Um, I think it's purely going to be your economic stones, your metal ores, your... Uh, it might even be gems and stuff, too. It, there's probably... In detail, there's probably some more specific stuff about it. And then you can turn mods on and off here. Right now, you have to have a brand new world to have mods. Just the way the game works right now. There's a lot of that in Dwarf Fortress. <clears throat> so we'll make our world. We'll see what happens. One thing I wish they would get to is an option to reject worlds like we used to have. Right now, you have to save the world and go delete it manually. But you're good. You can just kind of jump in anywhere. Find a nice, heavy, forested zone. Oh, this is perfect. This is actually ideal. I see a really great place for us right now. So, this is just the world being generated. Things, events are happening. Civilizations are rising and falling. Great beasts are dying. We're doing 100 years. We have 7,311 historical figures. Those are going to be great beasts, demons, gods, things like that. We're going to jump in. There's a decent tutorial in this that'll teach you the key binding mechanics. I'm not going to worry too much about that. Uh, I will explain what I'm doing though, or try to, unless I get really, really involved. <laughs> uh, we're going to go into fortress mode. It takes a couple weeks to get your for your uh, expedition ready. We're going to skip the tutorial. But this is a nice small world. There's, there's a lot of fun things to do. Ooh, we even have a volcano. Oh god. Uh, and a flux stone layer. That's worth looking at. But for our first time, I think it's worth going look for like this green area. So we have a nice serene area. It means it'll be very peaceful and friendly. There can be weird magical creatures there, but by and large you won't get mauled by the surrounding wildlife. 
as opposed to out here we've got wilderness um, untamed wilds I saw here we are there's some untamed wilds out here in this tropical shrubland tropical zones are really neat there's a lot of animals in it um, a book titled untitled that's fun um, you gotta kind of watch out for these these little black holes they're goblin pits goblins will eventually be a problem you typically don't have to worry about them for a couple of years uh, these little green shrubs are elven forests. They'll trade useless things with you, and they hate it if you give them animal pieces or wood, because they're really whiny anymore. Um, the little forts are other uh, dwarven fortresses, and the little castles are usually human castles. There is something called a tower you want to watch out for. Uh, I don't think we have any towers, and I'm okay with that. A kobold fort, that's adorable. I didn't even know they could stack rocks together. Um, this volcano sure is tempting, but it's got salt water and aquifers and stuff like that. I don't know if we want to jump right into that. Um, we can choose our origin civilization. There are two dwarf civilizations. There's the armored glazes, it has 16 sites and 1,500 dwarves. And then there's the unswerving gravel, which is 1,800 population and 27 sites. There's this mountain home up here. Looks like they're kind of intermingling a little bit. <clears throat> this site's a little bigger, so let's go with that. We have Queen Eurist Clod Guilds. And um, if you want to have a real easy time, come into the Find Embark location, turn off aquifiers. Uh, you can basically turn on anything you don't want and on anything you do want uh, if you want don't want to be in a hot biome uh, if you don't want if you want there to be flux stone things like that so flux stones for making steel probably won't get in that day oh that goes so fast so these are areas without aquifers these green areas aquifers aren't bad I recommend learning how to deal with them there's some really great tutorials <clears throat> if we get into one I'll uh, I'll show what you need to do. Oops. It's easy to do that. There's a lot. Most of this map is aquifer. There's a mod on the workshop right now that turns aquifers off. Um, and you click on the map, you can zoom in. Oh, there's almost a perfect spot. So there's dwarves nearby. We got some forests. It's a little warm. Warm is okay. You want to avoid, like, scorching. Scorching will, like, really mess your dwarfs up yes they're derp excessive uh, chiming in with terrifying biomes and haunting and necromancers they're definitely something to experiment with uh, maybe not for our first fort I like this kinda wait, wait. so you want trees you just want more trees than none uh, this is down here we have a desert you can get trees deeper underground which uh, is a little heavier into the thing, but what's down here? We got sand, soil. We have steel making stuff down here. That's pretty good. What about up here? Okay, no, this is all pretty good. We can have a nice heavy forest, and this uh, the stream Kindle splattered. <laughs> what a great name for a stream. I'm not too worried about the aquifer. In fact, I wouldn't mind showing it off if we have one. A light aquifer is pretty easy to deal with. This looks good. I like this. So we have iron, gold, silver, copper, platinum, tin, some other stuff that's not on my screen because the resolution's still a little wonky. We're in a warm savanna. There's sparse trees, but then we're also in this warm, heavily forested conifer forest. Other vegetation means things like you'll find plants, you'll find fruits and berries and things like that. I wasn't even in a savage biome uh, atoll, and I got mauled by giant wrens fairly early on. Um, you don't have to prepare for your journey carefully. I'm going to real quick, though, because I enjoy doing that. I like to see what kind of options we have. So we have uh, no elephants. Tragic. Well, we're going to take not regular war dogs, but we're going to take some, some normal dogs. Because uh, normal dogs can be turned into war dogs in about three seconds. A giant tortoise? How'd you lose a fort to a giant tortoise? That's madness. Turkeys are real good because they'll give you leather if you uh, moita them. And we need a gobbler so we can make little baby turkeys. 
you're going to get some draft animals. You're very unlikely to get a mated pair, though. And they're a lot cheaper than they used to be, and you get a lot more points than you used to. Oh, God, that's horrible, Blade. A squad of giant tortoises. Um, but there's a lot of things you can milk and shear and things like that. Uh, goats and sheep are pretty good to have, um, but they require pasture. Pigs, birds, cats, dogs don't require any kind of grazing material. You can keep them safe inside your fort. <clears throat> the other stuff you kind of have outside, which, you know, we're, uh... Well, we get a couple, just since we're in a serene land. We will probably be okay. Um, items. Now, here's where you can get a lot of extra points. Get rid of these wheelbarrows and step ladders. You don't, you don't need them. They'll take about three seconds to build once you get on site. Same thing with the crutches, the splints, the buckets. Um, hmm, I'm not going to worry about hunting right now, so I'm not going to take any quivers. I'm not going to take any pigtail material, because pigtail material is also expensive. Let's see. <clears throat> we don't really need this extra axe. And no pigtail. Okay, so we have all kinds of points left. So we're going to take some spider silk, though, because it's a lot cheaper. We can take pretty much double what we were going to take of the uh, pigtail cloth. Like, exactly. It's, it's wonderful. Don't need crafts. Uh, a couple pieces of wood aren't a bad thing to have. I'm bringing the axe with me, so I'm not worried about it. Metal bars are really expensive. Um, if you want to bring some metal with you, you're better off bringing some stone and just bringing some kind of ore. Like, bring some hematite ore, you'll get multiple bars of iron when you smelt it uh, for a much cheaper cost. Tetrahedrite is actually really, really great. And so is bituminous coal. Each bituminous coal gives you nine cokes, which you use for fueling your, your furnaces, your metal industry, things like that. You don't need that to start off, though. Um, and we're in a very mineral-rich area, so I'm not real worried about any of that. Uh, don't need gems. Blocks. You can make blocks on site. Uh, more seeds are generally pretty good to have. You can never really have too many plump helmets or plump helmet seeds. Everything else are different kind of plants. Uh, plump helmets are probably... Well, they're you're definitely most important crop you need. Bring in an anvil's good because you don't always get one for trading. Um, if you do want to bring a hunter, bringing some kind of ammo might not be a bad idea, like some copper bolts. They do enough damage to smaller wildlife for hunting and safety purposes. Uh, if you're in a heavily mountain area or volcano or something like that, you might bring another pick. Picks. All the weapons and stuff are so cheap now. It's really great. Armor is still prohibitively expensive, and you're better off just getting a different dwarf if someone gets mauled. Um, instruments are also super expensive. Don't sweat them. Just buy them from the traders. Bringing more booze is an option. It means you don't have to worry so much about getting your um, your booze industry up and running. I like just having a little bit of everything. Dwarves have needs, like sims and things like that. They will get bored of drinking the same thing. They don't really care about eating so much, but if they drink only one type of booze forever, they get really bored. Um, recommend bringing a little gypsum plaster just for when you inevitably want to settle up a hospital. And I'm looking for lie, but I can't remember what it's under. Because I think you can bring lie with you. Lies used to make soap, and it's a pain in the ass to make. Um, let's do a little experiment here. We've got some yak lung. Mmm. They'll just pull it out of the barrel and eat it since it's prepared. Uh, let's bring a couple of different animals, and then if things are the way they used to be, we should get one barrel for each different type of animal meat we bring, which is a great way to get early barrels, because you get on site, you turn your meat into meals. Easy way to keep stocked in multi-boozes. Well, um, all the different plants, Blade, the, the different seeds you have, uh, pigtail, cave wheat, sweet pods, and uh, plump helmets are those four different ales. So brew pigtails and don't use them for cloth, or brew cave wheat and don't use it for flour, or grow, not brew cave wheat. <laughs> brew cave wheat and you'll get beer. Um, 
So yeah, what else? Let's do like ten. Uh, some rather spleen that's kind of expensive. Bugbat tripe. How could I say no? Pond grabber intestine. No, I don't want pond grabber intestines. I'm willing to splurge on this cave crocodile kidney though. I need one more silly meat item. Giant bat. Drolthas are neat. Drolthas are like underground elephants. Oh, minimum of each type. Um, I'm not sure if there's a way to do that. Um, your best bet for something like that, ooh, prepared donkey lung, we do like lungs, would be to set up a stockpile that feeds only into a certain still and only put certain seed or plants in it. You would just have a still that makes beer, a still that makes ale, a still that makes wine, and have it only pull from a stockpile that has those items that you need to do that in. Which, we can show off how to do stuff like that. That's a little bit... It's fiddly, but it can be more important uh, for long-term health and happiness. Because your dwarves are all going to be pretty easy to keep happy early on. We'll grab some pond turtles. Pond turtles are great. We'll give you shells for crafting. You can bring more plump helmets. They're good for brewing and getting more seeds, but we already have extra seeds. Um, how many did they give us? Fifteen, that's fine. If we have points left over, that's a great place to put it. Um, let's see, guard vegetables. No, I'm not worried about any of that. Uh, we need to replace our bags. Bags are good for seeds, flour, sand, things like that. Thread is important for hospital stuff. Ropes, you can make chains and tethers and wells out of. Oh, yeah, no, it's, uh, the, the, they're very generous. Uh, it's very friendly for new players now, Grimoth, with the extra points. Um, don't buy barrels, just make them out of wood when you get there, or, like I said, if this trick works, we should have an extra ten barrels. Because um, they're all meat, but they're all different types of meat. But again, I'm not 100% sure if that's still a thing. Um, you Oh, there's the lie, it's in miscellaneous. Oh, it's so cheap, too. Yeah, you should definitely bring some lie. That way you don't have to worry about making ash and things like that. Uh, potash and pearl ash are fertilizer. <coughs> uh, dwarven nobility hate this guy. Click here to find out why. You can bring eggs, but they won't be fertilized, which is sadness. Uh, tools all seem to be like instrument pieces. And yeah, we don't need any of that crap. A um, couple mugs, honestly not a bad idea because it'll take a little bit to get uh, our, uh, let's see, our stone industry up and running. They're expensive and you should just make them out of wood, but your dwarves get unhappy if they drink out of, don't drink with a cup. So, ooh, I have enough points I could bring a Peridot mug. I honestly don't know what to spend all these points on. Rock salt mugs. There you go. Some granite mugs. Okay. Um, Because there weren't any really fun animals. I don't really want more than I have. Oh, two male cats. Don't bring lady cats. You'll probably get one later on anyway. And that'll be all the cats you'll ever need. Two cats will get most of the vermin out of your fort. Unless it gets really, really big. Um, you can also bring, honestly, the things are so cheap anymore. You can bring an animal and butcher it and get just a stupid amount of meat out of it. Um, let's see. <laughs> uh, you don't want to bring too much stuff because it makes it hard to get everything inside the fort. What do I do with 200 points? My goodness. They are spoiled for choice. You know what? Maybe I'll bring... Where'd, where'd my stone go? Maybe I will do that thing and bring some bituminous coal. God, it's cheap. Okay, and we'll bring some... I like tetrahedrite. Tetrahedrite's fun. If we can get... Um, a little bit of metal industry up and running because that can be useful to know actually one of my favorite things is to not bring any of the weapons either and just forge everything on site just bring some fireproof stone 
um, bring a, oh, where's my, I do wish it was a little easier to find things. Hmm. Oh, right, it's under other miscellaneous, something like that. There we go. But just say, make a fuel tab. Oh my god. Okay, that'll keep us in that. And you can't bring bins, which is a bummer. So actually, yeah, I guess I'll bring some wood. Why not? Where is where was the wood? Is it? I'll bring nether cap because I like black building materials. Hmm. I haven't seen any raiders yet, Grimoth, but I haven't gotten real far into my second year yet because I I just keep experimenting and playing with things. Um, hmm. Well, we'll just bring more plump helmets. Like I said, when in doubt, bring more things that you can turn into booze. And three points left. One more coal. Why not? Okay, so dwarves. Now this, um, things have changed. Mason is not your stone worker anymore. Your mason is now your architect. Um, and your crafter is for your craft workshop. And your stone cutter, your stone carver, and your engraver. Two of these revolve around smoothing floors. And one of them is your actual mason skill. If you're an older dwarf fortress player. And I keep forgetting which ones which I think stone cutting is smoothing and I really wish they'd change that back to the way it was uh, Mason has replaced the architect ability which is good for someone to have it makes the workshops look nicer but something in the steam version is everyone will kind of just do everything um, that was a setting they used to have in classic uh, so unless you get really anal and specialize certain things it doesn't really matter but generally, the best person for the job will try to do it unless they're busy, and then someone else will just come along and, and do it. So, you can view your dwarves and see if there's anything they might be good at. This guy's weak, so he probably shouldn't be working in stone. Uh, val values eloquence, he might be a good like uh, negotiator or something like that. We do need a traitor. Uh, disdains, perseverance, tough, creative, not dutiful, probably not good for a miner. Good spatial sense. This guy would be a really good miner. So let or this is this is the lady. It's Kogan Hatch season. Hatchet season. I had a guy named uh, what was it? Like Coden Nutshot or something like that. That made me really happy. Uh, let's make her our architect, our architect and our miner. So let's see what else we got. Recover slowly. Bad with words. Frail. Low willpower. So you're gonna be a farmer. <laughs> So that's planter, and then you can also be our brewer. Okay, what are you? Recover slowly, high kinesthetic sense, good focus. I'd like someone who's strong, slow to hate, high stamina. Okay, the weak is bad, so yeah, why don't you be our stone worker? Let's, I think it's stone carver. And then we'll make them also our stone crafter too, so we can get some good uh some goods to trade in the first season. Um let's see. Now I have someone else who's not weak. Creative, I like that. Why don't you be our woodcutter? You don't really need this many points in woodcutting, but just a little bit. And then points in carpenter is good because that affects how nice your beds are. And some wood crafting can be handy to have around. Let's see. Let's see. So you're going to be our nerd. Let's see. We're going to make you a diagnostician. This guy's just going to have a little bit of everything. Um, make you a negotiator, persuader. Just things that might make him a little better at his job. He's probably going to end up being the expedition leader. And then let's see, wound dresser and suture. Uh, and then we'll do one more for appraisal. So they're a trader. And they'll just do odd jobs around the fort. 
at extreme liability. <laughs> uh, let's see. It can be useful to bring a fighter or just put some dodge on all your dwarves too. If you're going into a more hostile zone, dodger is a great secondary skill for things you have. Uh, let's see. These guys are both weak. Not dutiful, patient. Um, what else do we need? We have a brewer, we have a stone worker, we have a woodworker. Um, I kind of like having a mechanic. Mechanic's pretty good to have around. Let's see. Boo, 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 boo. Where are we at? Ah, it's under labor now. The higher your mechanic skill is, the faster your mechanical things will work uh, based on how good their parts are. If you have a, a, a novice person making your gears, when you try to use a door with those gears, it will take a long time for it to do its thing. Um, why don't we bring an animal trainer, since we have, uh, we have dogs. And what else can you do? You know, I like having a cook. Efficient cook's not bad. Um, hmm? Oh, I need more in the uh, animal trainer. Um, what else do we give the mechanic? Your points for your skills are free. They don't affect your embark anymore. So go nuts. Find something you want to give a guy. Like, I want this guy to be a keyboardist. I don't. But, uh, you know, I could do that if I wanted. How about... Oh, yeah. He could be a mechanic and he could be a uh, weapon. Actually... I find a lot of armor smiths or weapon smiths come join my uh, fort anyway. So I'm going to make an armor smith because I never seem to get them. So yes, yeah, so we've spent all our points. We got our animals. Uh, you can get a lot real customizy here. You can make your fortress name. You can make a symbol of like seven dwarves standing around cheeses. And yeah, that's you could go nuts. Grimace says, you finally, seven professional wrestlers are within our grass. Absolutely. Because everyone could do everything. So I could just have a bunch of writers and poets, and they'll have to figure out how to use the tools when they get there. But that's fine. Oh, I like this map so far. So the game, by default, auto-saves when you come in, and then every season, which I recommend keeping that. I'm trying to think of what options I have. Okay, so Dwarven Outpost, you've arrived. Uh, we're going to have a caravan come in August. August, uh autumn from our civilization oh, we are the the dwarf fort armor typhoon tosid to shock and we strike the earth so we we're paused right now here's our wagon it has all our crap on it let's look for our barrels so i just want to see so there's all our booze meat barrel ah uh, looks like we got 10 meat barrels barrels yeah, so that still works. That's awesome. So that's a lot of free barrels. We just need to turn them into food. Um, so, okay, very first thing we need to do. Are we safe? Hit the U button. Go to others. We are not safe. There are carp on this map. The carp are in the water. Um, this is our overview for our things. We can see... Uh, any items they have, their health, any skills they know, if they have any rooms or labor. This is all mo more important for your dwarves. Carp are an older dwarf fortress meme. They're... they're, mm, they're it's worth looking into. They're a lot of fun. This is a hell of a stream. Oh, no, we have a full-on river. Oh, that's awesome. We can have a lot of fun with a river. So we have a nice flat area, which I really like to work with. We've got soil we can build in for farms. We don't have any visible stone. Oh yeah, this place is flat as hell. Okay. Well. So we're safe. The carp are fine as long as they stay in their river. We'll be okay. We've got some wood with us. We've got plants here, so even if we didn't have a pickaxe, we could forage for food and we could live off the surface for a while. Um, but that's, that's for elves and, and humies and kobolds. Um, just looking for a place I want to dig in. Ooh, I like this over here. I like having a nice side entrance. So yeah, we want to get everything inside the fort. Resist the urge to just jump in, though. Look around, see if you can plan anything. 
Uh, this layer looks to also be a lot of soil. I can see that this is all loamy sand. Um, hey, Yaru. <clears throat> sand is great for doing your farms. It's fast to dig through, um, but it's ugly. It won't make your dwarves sad to be near it, but they won't really like it either. Uh, if you hold control and zoom, you can uh, your mouse wheel, you can zoom in and out, otherwise your mouse wheel will make you go up and down. Um, last to move around, let's see, I would recommend going to the, we want the labor menu. We don't need you, thank you. So I don't need anyone fishing, we have plenty of food, so I'm going to turn my expedition leader off fishing. Uh, and I'm going to have him actually pick up a pickaxe and help out with that, since I don't need any doctoring or trading. But I believe that was our trader. Let's make sure. Yeah, that's our trader doctor guy. He feels all right. <laughs> he has great intuition. His ability to focus on a sum of patience. A sum of patience, just like our friend Grimoth. He has little willpower and a questionable spatial sense. He probably shouldn't be mining, but he'll be fine. I just wouldn't want him to be mining around lava or things like that with that. Um, so, back to this labor tab here. Okay, everyone's pretty good here. We have a woodcutter. Um, I want to go to standing orders. So, I don't want people to go look for webs. I'm fine with automatically butchering carcasses and cleaning fish. Automating the kitchen means it'll automatically render fat. Automating the tannery means it'll automatically turn corpses into leather if they're able to. Um, I don't want them to automatically weave all thread if they're able to, because thread. I don't want people going to the hospital and stealing all their thread. Um, hauling is generally fine. Refuse and dumping. This is all fine. Um, you may want to uh, ignore refuse completely. Uh, you probably want to ignore outdoor refuse, especially if you're in a more dangerous area. Siege isn't forbidding, not as big a deal. Chores are things you can have your kids do, which is pretty great. Uh, job cancellations. I don't want everyone to harvest. Harvest. I just want my farmer to harvest. He's better at it and faster. Similar foods and barrels is fine. Uh, and water. This is more making safe places for you guys. Once we get some water inside the fort, that'll be more important. Um, let's see. Kitchen. Okay, this is one of the most important things you can do, especially if you're going to use a kitchen. Click this button. This means we are not going to cook our plump helmets. We are going to brew them and eat them. Brewing them and eating them makes more seeds so we can make more plump helmets. Um, cooking your seeds is off by default. If you cook your seeds, they won't, uh, you can't grow them anymore. Uh, also, don't cook your booze. If you have a lot of booze, feel free to cook your booze. But I mean like booze in the thousands. If you have under 100 booze, don't, don't be cooking it. And then meat and fish and other things. Uh, you might want to come here to turn off tallow or fat when you get some from butchering or animals being murdered uh, just by being hostile or whatever. You're going to end up with some tallow at some point. Uh, you might want to not cook that. They'll eat it. You can make a roast or a stew out of nothing but tallow, but uh, it's also good for soap making. Okay, stone use. This is where you can see what all the stone in the game does. You can see whether it's lava proof, and you can have them do things like, oh, I want you to build buildings out of gold ore instead of smelting it down into bars and making it out of gold bars. Um, okay, so yeah. That's the super, super important stuff out of the way. Um, we can turn our wagon off, but that'll expose all our stuff to the elements. As long as food's in a barrel, it's fine, uh, but we do need to get everything underground. I like this area right here. I like this little nook down here. Let's zoom out a little bit. Let's get a nice place we can put everything. So we're going to do, click on our pickaxe. We're going to dig a regular mining hallway or room. It assigns a miner to the task, and then we go, and we're just going to make, we just drag, make big little boxes. Um, I like to have a little doorway gap, and we're just going to bring everything inside. We're not going to worry too much about it. Um, let's see, and then it would be nice to have a little place to sleep. You don't need to build rooms. You, I can just have beds along the hallway for them to have a place to sleep. You can do some really nice organic designs and things like that. 
So I want them to do all that first. And then I'm going to build some workshops. So I'm going to go over to this button over here, the little place structures and work areas. There's our miners. They're coming to do their thing. We're going to build a carpenter. Build it over here. Use those nether cap logs. We'll uh, cut down some of these trees by using my wood cutting designation. This is how I would pick uh, fruits and plants and things like that. We've got some cranberries. We've got some cabbages. That's a great way to get some extra food. Um, this is smoothing stone and engraving. We can't do that with the dirt. That's uh, why dwarves like stone more. It makes them happy. Uh, also, we can get some farms set up too. So This is a handy thing. A couple different ways. So like these guys are going to dig all this at some point. If they don't get distracted or fall asleep or anything like that. <laughs> now, if I want them to do something else but not immediately, I click on this arrow button. I can select my medium or high priority buttons. So this would, if I do this, they'll do this after all the four tiles are dug out, they'll come do the five. Or if I need something done right now, I can make it more urgent. So I'm going to leave that at four. And there's other things you can do with this advanced menu that I'm not going to really get into, but that can be kind of handy. Uh, or if you don't want to mess with any of that, mine out some things you think you want, and then just don't bridge them with any of your other uh, areas. And then when you're ready to dig, everything else is done, breach into that area and start your digging again. Okay, some nice things about this new version on Steam. So I need a stockpile so we can bring all our stuff inside. Uh, I hit pause to with the space bar, and that does this all up here. You can do this manually, but you can do the whole thing with the mouse, but some of the hotkeys are still really good. We're going to paint a stockpile. We're going to use our stamp. We're going to paint this stockpile here. Okay, so this is a weird lumpy stockpile. That's not important. We're going to accept it. We're going to make everything we have, um, except we're not going to put wood in it because it'll fill it up really fast. We're not going to put stone in it. Just click this none up here for this category, or if I wanted specifically, I could have them bring the my bituminous coal in. I'm good. We'll bring it in later. Things aren't going to steal rocks. They'll steal things like mugs or my anvil or things like that. We don't want trash, and we don't want dead bodies inside. Dead bodies inside your fort will rot and make everyone really upset. We don't want rough gems because they take up too much space. Uh, let's see, food is all fine. I don't want to bring the seeds in yet though, so I'm going to turn off all the seeds and everything else should be okay. So they're, everyone who's not digging, they've gone to store item and stockpile. So our farmer, he picked up some cave spider silk rope and she's going to bring it inside. There's our little wood things. And there we go. There's the rope they brought in. You can see all this stuff. The tile sets, new tile sets, really great. Um, let's see. I do actually want them to do something for me. Okay. I want you to make me a chair. And I want you to make me a door. Now, doors are very important. You can hide behind doors and lock them. And unless something has the building destroyer trait, it can't come get you, um, which is important because sometimes there are small things that are incredibly deadly, but they can't break down your door. Put doors on your fort as soon as you can. Um, so they finished up my stockpile room, but I have this weird lumpy stockpile. If I click this paint button, I can redo the whole thing. I can make gaps and things like that. The only thing I haven't been able to f do, I think, is um, go between floors. But I really like that. I like that you can just add more stockpile. You'd have to do a totally new stockpile before or delete it and remake it. Um, it would also be nice to have the ability to copy and paste them. We used to be able to do that. Okay, so we've got this area I want to do for my farming. 
good to get a farm plot up. It's hard to see on dirt, but uh, I want that should be more than adequate for our size of fort. And then we're going to build our still in here, which is also under farming. Workshops, farming, still. That's where we get our booze. And we'll build that out of our... I love this, this black building material. Okay, so we have our door. We have our chair. So I want to build... I like to pause when I build furniture. I'm going to put a chair in here. Oh. They're moving it somewhere. If things are correct instructed, but it won't let you place them, someone probably has them picked up. So I can choose the material of what I'm trying to build. Furniture, chair, uh, or I can just use the closest material. I like keep building after placement too, that way if you're trying to put a lot of things down at once. So this little tiny room with a chair in it is gonna be an office for our expedition leader. Because he has many hats, and he has a lot of work to do. So we just paint that little zone, we accept it, and we click this little button, and then we can make it his office. So we're going to go to our noble screen, which is the crown, or you can hit N. So Saravish is our expedition leader. So we need a... I don't really need a bookkeeper yet, but I do need a broker. That's going to be Saravish. And I'm going to need a manager. Okay, that makes life a lot easier. So, once they get this office built for him, he can start doing orders. So, I didn't do that seed thing earlier. We're going to make another stockpile here. It's not very big. It's just around the farm. And we're going to do our food. We're going to turn on all of our plant seeds. Really, we just need our dwarf plant seeds, but I don't feel like digging through them. All the seeds are fine. And we're going to click on this barrel here, and we're going to turn barrels off. So they're going to bring the seeds over in bags. Because what dwarves do, because they're silly, is they put the seed in a bag, they put the bag in a barrel. If someone interacts with a barrel, your farmer will lose the ability to interact with whatever's inside it. Which makes it a real pain in the ass to try and plant things. So you click on your farm plot, and in spring we're going to do plump helmets. In summer, we're going to do plump helmets. In... Autumn, we're going to do plump helmets. In winter, we're going to do plump helmets. I'm not going to worry about the other crops yet. Okay, so we have this guy. We have our we have our manager now. So now we have access to this tab here, which is our work orders. So instead of going in and doing add new task and bed, add new task and bed, um, we really need a an add, not repeat, but a copy button. Because I can have them just make beds for a while. But we used to have a button that was just repeat, 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 so I don't have to go down this list every time I want something, if I want to make five wheelbarrows. So another way to do that is to do a work order, and I want you to make seven beds. So it takes a minute, because our, our expedition leader has to get time to get around to saying, hey, go do this. Um, and just for some tidiness sake, I'm going to clean out some of this junk. And I'm going to use designate uh, walls, floors, and other constructed tiles to be removed. This is how you get rid of ramps. I don't like having ramps on the front of my floor. I don't like to think of things uh, coming down over the top of the hill on me. I want them to come down over here where I can see them. Uh, Sarvesh is the expedition leader. Uh, yeah, see, they're having trouble planting because of the, uh, the nonsense. Oh, also, uh, back to the labor menu, which is U, Y, T, gets you into a lot of these menus. I want, I only want my planters to do the planting. Because <clears throat> I want him to get skill. Uh, and then he will become very proficient at it. Cause, mainly because I need other people doing things like hauling shit from the wagon. Okay. Let's see. We need a craft shop. I'm just going to use whatever's closest. Uh, let's see. Move stairs right. Oh, yeah. See, now we have nice, flat. Um... I've been experimenting with a more organic style with sweeping curves and things like that, and it's fun. 
It's less efficient, but it does certainly look nicer. Build your fort how you want. Until you get to, like, uh, over 100 dwarves, it doesn't really matter how your fort's laid out. As long as it's safe. Um, let's start digging down with our miners. We want to try some find some stone. All you have to do now is you do one type of stair, and you just either go up or down. And then when you're done, and they will build the appropriate stairs for each level, uh, and you'll be fine. We used to have to do some silly stuff about, well, am I, do I need an upstair? Do I need a downstair? Do I need an up-downstair? It's just all automatic now. And if they end up doing the wrong one, you can, you can go in and build your own ramps and stairs if you need to, if you end up messing it up. So it's not a big deal. No. Someone's trying to give water to the animals. We need buckets. Oh, yeah, what, what draft animals did we end up with? Also, are we still safe? There are a lot of carp. Ravens? Ravens aren't bad. Are you not in the river? Hmm, maybe it's jumping in the air. Um, let's see. We have our sheepies. We have two male bull yaks, which we will probably get rid of at some point. God help them if food stocks get low. Okay. Speaking of, we're going to make a zone. We're going to make a pen pasture zone. We're going to make a nice safe area for our yaks and our sheepies. Sheepies. They need to be outside so they can eat grass. And if you have too many, they'll eat the grass faster than it will grow. They can be startled out of this zone. <clears throat> it can be worth walling it in if you're in a hospital biome. It can be worth roofing it in if you're in a hospital biome, though I don't know if the grass will grow over that. Okay. We have plump helmet spawn in our farm. We have a lot of dirt. No stone yet. Sometimes you end up with a lot of stone. Hmm? Uh oh. I think I know what happened. Yep. Okay, we found the light aquifer for this area. So, we're not quite ready for that. That's okay. We'll be fine. Let's make some beds. We're just going to use closest material and keep building. They can sleep in the dirt for a while. And then we'll make a little dormitory. There we go. And let's see. We got plenty of booze for now, so I'm not real worried about it. The beds are done. Let's see. We've got booze ready to go. Ah, just keep getting stuff off the cart. Let's see, we still have a bunch of silk. Coal. Oh, I know what we need. Uh, we're going to make some bins. Bins are good because all these things that are just kind of sitting out, the cloth, the thread, um, any blocks that you have or bars, they'll get put in a bin and get tidied up. No, it's there. See, I got a little bed there. Thank you, the blade. Uh, be careful about right-clicking. You can not get your zone made if you do that. Okay. A dormitory, you don't need a door or a room or anything. You can really just stick them anywhere. <clears throat> also, when you're done with your dormitory and you're ready to build proper bedrooms, it's a great makeshift hospital. Because all you really need for a hospital is uh, places for people to sleep so they can be taken care of. Um, speaking of, we've got water, so let's always keep an eye on that upper left corner. He's out of seeds. Uh, we have a dead creature in our fort. Let's make a dead body stockpile. Uh, let's see, where do we want that? That's fine, we'll just put that there. This is going to be our corpses and refuse. Mainly vermin remains, that's what that little woolly shambler thing is. I don't even know if I can look at it. Yeah, there he is. It's a w fluffy wombler remains. Um, I can hide it. That's fun. <laughs> I can throw it in the dump. So someone will come throw that in this trash stockpile. We get the animals into the stockpile. The animal stockpile. Um, animal stockpile is actually something different. It's where you keep your caged animals. 
Okay. Oh, yeah. We need to make a kitchen, and that's going to be workshops again. Farming, kitchen. We need to empty out those barrels with our random meats. Which they'll do at some point, but... Let's see, what was I doing with the workshop? I have mugs, wood, ah, nest boxes. We need a place for our turkeys to lay eggs. If you have enough birds and you can keep them safe, you will never go hungry. You can also make other meals out of them too. Okay, kitchen's up. Let's have someone start making some lavish meals. That'll turn these plants and fish and meat. They did start eating some of the meat. They just grab it and eat it. Um, eventually we'll want some tables and chairs, but right now that's not a major priority. So, like, if we check on our guys, yeah, Satisfied at work, satisfied remembering doing stuff. I'm happy because I'm drunk. That's not healthy. Fondness talking with a friend because I haven't been giving them so much work that they can't talk to people. Um, you can overwork your dwarves and that'll really stress them out. They have a little list of needs over here and they'll start to get yellow and red as they get more uh, urgent. Oh, yeah, that's animal training. We need a little animal training spot. That's something I should have done earlier. So, uh, pets, so we want you to, I want you to have war training. There we go. Um, assign a trainer is going to be Daton. Daton. So Daton will train the dogs real quick. That way if something bad does come, War dogs are a lot more aggressive and stronger than normal dogs. Uh, hunting dogs have a better stealth score, so they're good for going and... Uh, they'll take out small prey, but also they'll just get mangled by things. How are we doing? Lots of carp. Lots of carp. Yeah, no fishing on this map. Carp are gigantic. Oh, there's, a, there's an emu. Didn't feel anything while in combat. Who are you in combat with? Maybe it fell out of something. Maybe it was before they even... Oh, wow. There's a whole herd of them. This would be awesome if we had a hunter. Emus. They shouldn't bother us. So animals become a war dog. It has a new sprite now. Oh, God. What's it... Oh, God. It's going to go kill the emu. So you have to really keep an eye out for combat notices. There's no sound. It doesn't auto-pause. I would love some auto-pause. So Emu misses the stray war dog. And you can't... You have to let it run before you can get back to it. Emu misses the war dog. Uh, stray dog scratches the emu in the leg, tearing the fat, bending the right bone. Yeah. Emu looks sick. Okay, well that one's probably dead. We should probably build a butcher very quickly. <laughs> uh, we'll just build it out here. It's fine. And we'll build a, a leather worker. Or a tanner, rather. Damn emus. Good doggy. Oh god, he's going again! <laughs> He's going again. He's losing his shit. Okay, no, he just went to go see the other dogs. Okay, he's fine. One issue with taming your animals on site is they do become attached to the tamer and they will just follow him around. Crow remains? What's been killing the crows? Oh, God. <laughs> he just maimed it and let it run away. Jesus. Okay, good. Well, it means we don't have to deal with the corpse. Okay. Fun stuff. So, we need into the stone lair. So, what we're gonna do... We're gonna make some wooden blocks. 
No, we're gonna make about 20. You get three blocks per order to make blocks, so that'll give us about 60 blocks. And that should be plenty to do what we need and get into the, uh, get past that aquifer. I'll show you how to do that. Blocks are lighter to move than stone or logs. Oh, war emu. <laughs> oh, derp. That's probably nothing. Probably just more dogs fighting then. Is anything dead? No, nothing's missing. A lot of emus, though. Um, let's see. So I want to build... If you go under farming, I can get those nest boxes I had. And then we can make another little tiny pasture. And we can bring our turkeys in and they'll start laying eggs. Uh, let's see. Yes, and then click on you. Okay. The gobbler doesn't have to be pastured, he can just kind of be wherever he wants to be. And he'll fertilize the eggs, just being present. Um, if you want your eggs to hatch, keep them locked away from your dwarves or forbid them so that the dwarves won't come and put them in food barrels. So, uh, we could, got plenty of empty barrels, that's good. We're making a cave lobster roast. Do I have prepared food somewhere? There we go. What did we make? We made cave lobster roast and prepared weasel brain roast. Stack of three prepared weasel brain roasts. The ingredients are minced prepared wombat intestines, minced prepared yak lung, minced prepared wolverine lung, and minced prepared weasel brain. So you uh, turn four items into four roasts, but it just it improves their quality. They'll still rot if they're not in a barrel, but dwarves like meals. They'll have a, a little thing where it's like, they ate a fine meal. Uh, felt satisfied at work. Didn't feel anything sleeping without a proper room. Some of them get um, annoyed or embarrassed. They're annoyed there's no place to sit and eat. That's fine. We'll get to that. I just need these, these blocks done. That's an important task. Make them blocks. We got our bins. Everyone doing that? Some people don't have a job. They really should be putting these in the bins, but... Oh! I think that might be what he's doing. Yeah, he's putting cloth in this bin here. So we have a cloth bin. Got all our silk and our threads and stuff. What are you doing? No job. Uh, hmm. Well, they might be eating or something. But yeah, it's fun to check on your doors periodically. It gets harder as you get more of them. That happens a lot. Someone picked up something that two people were coming to use, and then they're like, I don't know what to do, it's gone. There's a woolly charmbler. Okay. We got blocks. We got blocks. Are you my actual carpenter? You are my actual carpenter. God bless. <laughs> yeah, hundreds of turkeys will kind of blow up your FPS blade. Oh, something about that. If you go into your settings and go into your game settings, there's actually something I found really useful. So, um, the game frames per second defaults at 100. I find that to be a little fast for me, but we used to have a button that was advance time by one step, which made watching combats a lot easier. Um, you can slow the game down by adjusting your game frame per second cap. So, like, if we knock this down to, like, 30. See how much slower and kind of more chill everything is? So, if you just need more time to do stuff, or if the game moves a little too fast for you, because, frankly, when I... At 100, it moves a little too fast for me. Um, that can be really helpful to do. So... I'm going to go back up to about 70, because that, that moves about right for me. Uh, I don't know what a lot of these are. A lot of these are the, the domain of Tarn's Madness. So we have plenty of drinks, we have other food. Now we don't know what we have, because we need to go to our noble screen, and we need to make Sarvesh our bookkeeper. This is how accurate you want your counts to be, which also means how long he's going to spend counting everything in the fort. See, just putting it on three, he's like, yeah, I got a rough idea, this is what we have in the fort. 
So these 58 should be our other meals. If we check our stocks, also if you don't have all these buttons and numbers up, your resolution width is wrong for whatever you're playing on. So we've got 48 eggs, that's awesome. We have 10 prepared meals. So yeah, that's there's the eggs and the prepared meals. Uh, the block's done. How are we doing? They've made 18 of them. Let's see if we can get through. Okay, so this is not aquifer, but this is. So when dwarves get to damp stone, they'll stop digging. Okay, but I want you to go anyway. Light aquifers go real slow. So if you're ready, no one's on fire, you're not actively being sieged, and you go quick on that space bar, pretty easy to deal with. We're going to do construction, we're going to do wall, we're going to select material after placement, and we're going to do our apple wood blocks. They've added this in a patch, and God bless them. You can now just hit all, and it will use all of whatever material it needs. We were having to click on each individual item. I'm not sure what you mean, Grimoth. Is that something it says? Because if you go down to, if you go up to five, your counts are accurate. Or, um, it might just be that my guy's bad. Yeah, no, stock, all counts accurate. Yeah. So. Well, and I guess as his skill gets better, it'll be more accurate anyway. Typically, unless your fort gets really big, you should have a pretty good idea of what's uh, what you've got anyway. But see, these are aquifer tiles. They're damp. Water will come... Uh, Oh, yeah, I got your agreement. That is definitely something you kind of have to get used to. Um, it's not like other simulation games where you actually have to tell someone, okay, go count everything and make sure we have it. Um, so a light aquifer, these squares will slowly fill up with water, uh, very slowly. A heavy aquifer, you have to do all different kinds of tricks. But for what we have here, this should be adequate. And if a little water does seep in, We'll be okay, and uh, it'll evaporate. Now we just need to see, this doesn't seem to be damp. It might be, though, because I noticed they stopped digging again. Uh, and build your walls orthogonally. Uh, that way you don't end up with dead corners. Okay, so more stair. This might just be one one level aquifer. Once we get through the aquifer, we should be in the stone layer. More peat. Yep, we got another one. Another one. Oops. Um. Oh, it's raining. It's been raining here for like an entire day, so I'm not. I didn't realize that was in game. Okay, <clears throat> get to digging. Sometimes you'll have a couple different levels. Oh, we have sand. Is this actually? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. That's pretty. White sand. It's a shame it's an aquifer level. It'd be fun to build here. <laughs> See there, we're getting a little bit of water. Pools of one amount of water will uh, evaporate. If it gets deeper than that, it can be problematic. Uh, so nether cap blocks. I wish it had the... Oh yeah, it does have the quantities. 12, okay. We might need a few more blocks. How many? You're still. Oh, you're still making 30 more. That's fine. And that'll chew through our wood, but we're in a heavily forested area. We've got wood. We can make literally everything in our fortress out of wood, but we're not elves. But yeah, see, this is. I'm not on pause right now. This is. It doesn't go very fast on a light aquifer. Uh, and this is a pretty easy way to get through them.
Oh yeah, it's definitely important. It's important to flood your fortress a few times. But that's what the river's for. Okay. Let's go down another level. We got plenty of booze, food. There's nothing eating us, so... There's some eagles. Uh, siltstone. We found the stone. Now, this might be damp just because of the water on the floor above, which will give you false positives. I think we found the stone layer. Which means we should be past the aquifer. Mm, no, this says there's more. It could be damp just from these square though. Let's uh The nice thing about aquifers is that they uh they, they generate water and they will also absorb water. So you can pump aquifers into themselves. Uh this might still be aquifer. Let's see if some more water shows up. Yeah, there it is. It's all the way around. Okay. Okay, so let's build some more walls. Where am I at? Construction. Goodness, sorry. I can use the stone that's nearby too, but it's heavy. Oh, he's out of logs. That's an easy fix. Cut that tree, and that tree, and that tree, and that tree. Try not to kill the yak. But if you do, whatever. I don't need the yak. Oh. Well, I'm on priority one, but this stuff's also kind of important. Parasites follow your birds around. I think you can use them in the... Um, you can catch them and eat them, but... <laughs> dwarves don't like eating vermin. His beard... Okay, another thing we should do, we should get some more doors made. It's summer. Um, it'll be trading time too soon. Keep making food. Use up those eggs. Let's see. Okay, he'll do that in a little bit. Um, let's go ahead and... Hmm... I use all my wood for crafts as the problem. That's why I was hoping to get to some stone. Yep. Oh no, that's the same water. Let's see. You can do everything in one width columns, one column stairs. Uh, you can get roadblocks though when you get a lot of people. That construction got suspended because there was a dog on it when he tried to do it. Okay, down one more layer. God willing, we'll be through the aquifer. So, a light aquifer, it's not difficult or dangerous, it's just time consuming. Uh oh, where's my upstairs? There we go. Son of a bitch. I said dig that spot. I don't give a damn about your wet stone. Chop chop. <laughs> Not like this, oh no. I mean, we could probably flood our fort. It might take several years. How are we looking? Hey, this looks better. We did it. We found jet, too. Nice. Okay, great. We'll get to work. Let's see. 
So we want a nice big, so here I might start doing some more, uh, some curves and things, cause that's kind of fun. And then we'll do, let's see, let's do a nice big, workshop here let's see and then we'll do you for you and we'll kind of fill in some of this area here nice so i'll put a stone crafter down there and we'll start working on some trade goods Oh, yeah. I mean, you've read about Boat Murdered, right, Blade? I mean, they had the they had the lava. Oh, you mean the whole fortress. Oh, that would... Ooh, I think that might FPS death your fortress. So, um, we've got a couple different areas we need to be bumping around to quickly. So, if we press F1, we go back to our wagon, which still has our tetrahedrite, our coal, stuff like that. Um... If we click this button here, or hit the lowercase h, we can click on set this entry to recenter at the current view. We'll do that F2, and we'll do this as F3. So now I can bounce back between my major areas. That's really nice to have. Okay, so now we can work on getting our coal and tetrahedrite inside, um, which means I would like a couple of wheelbarrows. Okay, let's do a couple of them. We'll do a couple buckets. Okay. And let's get our craft workshop. Something we can make do with all this stone. Make it out of wood blocks. Why not? It's light. They're comfy and easy to wear. Let's see. How's our meals look? Everyone's happy-ish. No one's unhappy. 66 prepared meals. So that's all of our other food. And that used up a lot of our... Oh, we have plants for brewing. So yeah, lots of turkey egg hen roast. Hoary marmot tripe roast. Well made, too. Those little symbols on the side of anything you look at will uh, tell you how well made something is. So yeah, and then I want... Let's see, we'll have the big mason here. Because this is going to be, we're going to need a big stone pile. And then we'll do... This will be kind of like crafty land here. This can be my smelter area. Yeah, it's been a while, Blade. I, I don't disagree with you. Um, there's a listing of how you can see what quality things are, but... Oops. Um... So where, where was it? You can go to your stocks and you can actually see. So we were on what? Prepared meals, a hoary marmot stuff, um, view. Hmm. Finally prepared. Uh, oh shit, there's a unicorn. That could be bad. <laughs> There are a lot of unicorns. Oh, we might be losing some war dogs. Unless they're running. Okay, I think it ran away. Jesus. Ah, to have some cage traps ready to go. Good lord. Something you have to worry about in a 
serene environment. Oh, we have cherry blossoms. Look at that. You can make a little fruit harvesting zone. And we could, we could have cherries. We could make a little cherry wine, maybe. The carp is fighting. What is the carp fighting? God help us. It's fighting one of the war dogs. Why why are you why are you fighting my war dogs? Okay, stop that. Enough with your nonsense. Okay, this is looking good. Um now we can start our rock crafts. So we can have something to trade with the dwarfs when they come to town. Get to work. Okay, so we got food. We got beds. We could use some doors. Uh, let's see. Door. Do oh, yeah, no, the carpenter. That's what I want. Add. There we go. Okay. Then we can wall off our fort. If the unicorns get real bad, we can make everyone run inside. And we'll see how things go. Well, they're still around this groundhog, too. The Twikies is laying eggs. We got booze. This is pretty comfy. Doing okay. Um, my stone crafters making rock crafts. God bless. Ah, oh, love that jet. And eventually we'll move everything down to the stone layer and we'll leave the uh, the farm up here. Um, maybe turn this into a barracks. Something like that when we get some more migrants. We'll probably get some extra dwarves this, uh, in the summer. You have a chance to attract them every season. Uh, Stray War Dog's been missing for a week. It must have been murdered by the uh, unicorns. Uh, one, two, three. We still have five, though, so we're good. That's why you bring six, and they'll have puppies in the next season or so. Okay, leave the damn unicorns alone. Sunberries? Those sound fun. A colony of honeybees, too. Neat. We can have honey and wax at some point. This is a great zone. Oh, did you already make those doors? God damn, he did. Our carpenter is kind of ripping ass. He's putting in work. Hazelwood doors. There we go. And then if we need to, we can click on a door and you can click the lock button and that'll make it forbidden. And that's, that's for everybody. Unless a troll comes along and punches the son of a bitch. And they're wood, so I think a dragon could burn them down. But if a dragon shows up, we've got... We've got other problems. Okay. So he's making his little rock crafts. She. Fine. They're hard to tell apart still. Although the ladies do seem to have top knots a lot. Okay. But see, if you don't do that priority designation, especially if you're doing... Uh, kind of what I did here, where everything's kind of wonky... They just kind of go wherever. They kind of dig wherever they were, unless something else catches their attention. How are we doing, guys? Satisfied at work. Now embarrassed without having a proper bed. Uh, satisfying room work. Let's uh, click our work order. Speaking of, let's make a work order and get quite a few beds. You can just type in what you're looking for. Or you can scroll down and find the workshop and do it that way. So this is going to be a general order for 10 beds. If I had multiple carpenters, uh, I could say how many I wanted to do it, or you can go specifically to the workshop and do that. Manager is one of the best tools you can make use of in Dwarf Fortress. It saves you a lot of clicking. And you can go back to just kind of watching things go along. See how the river's going. Oh, that's going to be fun. We get to flood the fort. Won't that be great? started raining. Everyone's going to be pissy because they're in the rain. So, actually, one thing I might do... If 
I can get someone to do this. I think I'm going to stay, because the war dogs are following their trainer around, and I think that's part of what's getting them in trouble. And I haven't done this yet, so... It's a machine, it's probably furniture. Hmm. Oh, cages and restraints. I want a rope chain there. Use one of my cave spider silk ropes. Use one of my cave spider silk ropes. So what we'll do is we'll tie two dogs up near the beginning of the fort. That way, if something comes in like a kobold or some irritating wild animal, the dogs can maul it, and they've got a pretty good radius on these. So, add animal. Uh, so, we lost one of our bitches. So, we'll do one of the males, and then we'll do one of you. And that way, they'll just sit there and watch the fort. Can help out with vermin and other undesirables and look quit antagonizing the local wildlife. See? Now they're tied up. Humiliated after being confined. Aww. That's more of a the jail mechanic. Annoyed when caught in the rain. They'll be fine. The only animals you have to worry about losing their shit are like um wild animals that you've tamed. So I need a furnace. I want a smelter. There may be lava at some point, but we don't have any yet. And then I want a metalsmith. And go ahead and build that with my iron and we'll build it out of jet. That's fine. And then actually I'd like a little more room. Okay, so we're going to need a couple stockpiles in here. We're going to bring in our ore, our metal ore. We're going to make a charcoal stockpile. And then we're going to make a metal bar stockpile. So if we can get them to work on that, that'd be great. Because I don't want them hauling the tetrahedrite and stuff from the wagon. That's where those wheelbarrows come in handy. Um, wheelbarrows are really great because, like, if I make a stone stockpile here for my craft dwarf... It's, a, it's this eraser, not this eraser. <laughs> okay, and then we make this a stone stockpile, just for my craft dwarf. We want other stone. We don't want him using flux stone or things like that. So, and then this stone stockpile can have one wheelbarrow. That means that once the wheelbarrow gets there, only one person will try to fill this stockpile. So I won't have like 800 people trying to bring stones to this one stockpile. Oh, we got some migrants. He made the masterpiece silk ring. Or stone ring. What do we got? Ooh, we got a whole bunch of people. Good lord. What do we got? We got a whole bunch of woodcutters. Oh, great. So there's no real great way to... Oh, but they're a spear dwarf. So they're a fighter. That's kind of cool. Uh, what are you? You're a Marks Dwarf and a Pike Dwarf and a Bow Dwarf. You're a Surfacer. Okay, what are you? You're another Spear Dwarf. Okay, that's cool. Uh, I have another adequate Animal Caretaker and Weaponsmith. So there we go, like I said. I didn't really need to bring a Weaponsmith. And we have a Hunter, who's also a Mechanic and an Optics Engineer. Okay, this is... and some kids. Okay, and we have our beds, so now it's time to make, like, proper bedrooms. Um, let's see, let's go this way with that. Ooh, what's this? Oh, magnetite! We found our iron. Bless. Bless the miners. We've got this whole little field we can deal with. Kind of do some nice ringy things. Kind of 
smooth it out a little bit. Okay, and then we'll do some little bedrooms. Let's see. Let's see, four. So we need about 14, ideally. I've gotten to where I kind of like bedrooms done like this. Let's see. Just a nice little four square. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, thirteen. One more. And that way they'll be near the crafting area and things like that. What are the turkeys fighting? The hunter fighting. What? I'm sorry. These are okay. These are wild turkeys. <laughs> like why? Are, why are you shooting my turkeys, you asshole? <laughs> oh god. Okay. So I don't think anything in here is gonna get carted away by animals. So we're gonna disable this meeting zone, and then we need a proper meeting zone in here. Uh, I need uh, my mason. Basically, I need a meeting zone, a place for people to hang out, and having one not out in the middle of nowhere would be helpful. We're gonna stone workers gonna be in here. Enemy combatant turkeys, enemy combatant turkeys. Okay, and then the same here. We're gonna do another big stone stockpile. Okay. That's going to be stone, other stone, and then we want a wheelbarrow. Okay. So we need a few more beds. Work order, bed. I just need like four more. And then we want a uh, door, rock door. There we go. We need 14 of these damn things. So that'll take a hot minute. Okay. And then, just for personal preferences, this won't affect your game, but I like to hide things in my bedroom so I can't see them. That's this uh, menu here. You can designate items to get dumped into a spot. You can designate items for smelting. You can hide and unhide things. Just as I just don't like having clutter in my bedrooms. And then I also want to smooth the bedrooms, because that will make the dwarves inside them happier. And I like happy dwarves. That, was, that worked out well. Oh, that's fine. You cannot make doors out of blocks, Blade Skull. They do actually have to be actual chunks of door, or chunks of rock, and I believe it takes two to make a door which i thought it was no no my bad this is what my building's made out of it is just one rock per door that was confusing me earlier i'm glad i remembered that oh that's just hallway rock see and now this is nice and smooth we'll put a door and a bedroom on it and a bed in it and then we'll have and we should have the beds And if I wanted to, I could, let's see, where are my work orders? I can even say I want these to be made out of a specific type of stone. I really only have jet and silt stone, so not too fussed about it. So if I try to make this a bedroom now, it's going to say, no, you can't. Oh, it's going to say I can, which it shouldn't. Uh, you have a multi-bedroom tool. Uh, it won't let you multi-paint. Cancel that. Yeah, we'll, we'll do it the right way. Okay, everyone's who's not doing a task is smoothing. Smoothing is pretty harmless. Uh, you can't really screw that up. Ooh, dog is in the way of the door. I think the door is further back. Um, 
Actually, a, a cruel tactic is to take an animal you don't want and chain it out in the middle of a field somewhere, because it'll give you warn. It'll give you line of sight on hostile enemies. Uh, you do get more blocks from Chunks Blade. You get three blocks per chunk of stone, I believe I mentioned. If you need to access something that something is standing on... Um, let's see, where's a good example? Let's see if I can catch someone on this door. Oh, there he is. The dog's on the door. It'll come as a little tab here. So if I needed to make the door unpassable, I could do that. But I don't think I could do it while the dog is in it, which may be an issue. So I'm actually going to unbuild these doors and push them a little further back. Okay. Actually, I'm going to turn doors off from my finished goods. Hmm. Oh, furniture, furniture turn doors off. I don't want them bringing the doors up five flights of stairs because they're heavy since they, they need to be used down here. Yes, you absolutely want to make any constructions out of blocks because they're lighter and you get three times out of your stone. So you'll be able to build them faster if it's something you need to do in a hurry like how I was walling off that aquifer. Are you still doing? Yes, you're still doing. Good job. So it's late summer. It's Galena. Uh, We'll get into autumn here and then the caravan will come. I might need some more bins. Uh, I don't have... Actually, bins hold a lot of crafts. Where's leather? Finished goods. Oh, where's finished goods bin? Yeah, you can get a lot of crap in a, a finished good bin. And we've got... Uh, this one has got stuff we don't want to sell in it, which is a bummer. I'm not sure how to separate those. And then we've got some bars and blocks in that one. We've got our wooden blocks in that one. <laughs> Inside this bin is a slightly smaller bin. Hey, do what needs to be done. Oh, speaking of, we should build a trade depot. So right now, the trade depot is... Um, we're not going to get a wagon in our first season. Um, so actually do this. We're just going to get a little caravan. They're going to bring in some animals, which really hinders their uh, their weight, which is a shame, because I really liked being able to just give them a metal statue and buying out their... Basically doing the Harry Potter and going, we'll take the lot. Uh, but now traders have much stricter weight restrictions since they don't have wagons. Uh, I'm not sure if we'll get a wagon next year, but so we want a trade depot for the traders that are coming next month or so. So just build... Same way you do everything else, trade. And we want to select our material. We're going to make it out of our wooden blocks because they're super light and we have a bunch of them, like I've been talking about with Blade. And then that will be a place for the traders to come do their thing. We'll make it a little bit wider just to be safe. Okay. And then let's... <laughs> they went through the door even though it's on the ground. That's funny. Uh, door. Let's move the doors a little further back. Use those hazel doors. Where's the other one? Oh. Didn't get... Yes! Well, it makes it easier to move the trade goods there. And we'll probably move it later. There we go. Now that door got moved. Furniture, door, door. No. Doors have their own thing. They are furniture, but they have their own tab for building. Okay, so the beds are done, found more gems, cool. So we just need to smooth this last room out, if they'll finish the damn thing. Okay, um, so, bid, oops, this part doesn't matter, closest material. And dwarves would also like to have a chest or a bookshelf or something like that. There's three key things they really need. Uh, we've got a lot of wood. I might make some chests out of it. Um, we still doing okay? Eh, we're doing pretty okay. 
We could have more wood. And then let's work order some. Let's see. Um, chest. Oh, that's crafter. Oh. That's odd. My, uh, carpentry workshop broke. Maybe I clicked on it by mistake when I told them to unbuild something. Masterpiece figure of Saravesh. Tramp delight. That's my expedition leader, isn't it? No, it's a different one. Hmm. Where is that, actually? I'd like to look at that. This is a masterful siltstone figure of Sarves Trampled Guilt, created by Ashteth Beringal. The item is a masterly stone imprint. The dwarf and bolts of siltstone by Ashteth Beringal. Sarves Trampled Guilt is surrounded by the bolts. Maybe he was a legendary archer. Maybe he was a legendary crossbow bolt maker. <laughs> okay, there should be a bunch of doors here. door. So you want to smooth before you put your furniture because you can't put furniture, you can't smooth once it's been, uh, once something's on top of it. So if that matters to you, because you can make them live in dirt. It's just, you know, it's just unseemly to do so. What kind of an asshole would do something like that? Bolts of cloth? Yeah, that's possible, Ethel. Or hardware bolts. Very, very probable. Okay, so now, this is great. This I love. Bedroom. Multi. Washa. So everything that the game recognizes as a bedroom gets turned into a bedroom. And they're all individual, so they're set. All people have to do... You don't have to manually sign bedrooms. Dwarves will come and go, Oh, nobody's, nobody's living here. And they'll just drop their shit. So there we go. So now we got our bedrooms. Um, yeah, no, it's pretty great. Then doing the chunk, 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 chunk. Move over. Chunk, 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 chunk. All the little key presses. I need, what, two more doors? There's some doors. And you don't have to have everything there either. You can... Oh, and one more door. Tell me you have one more door for me. You just have to have the designations that they're going to be putting stuff there. So yeah, lots of beds. So and you can click on them to see if anyone's claimed anything yet. So far, no. So that worked out really good. Okay, beard on the doorknob. Okay, we got more wood. We got you're doing. Uh, what was I gonna have you make? Uh, you can make a couple more bins, why not? And then... There's something I wanted a lot of. Oh yeah, chess. Chess. 14 chess. Good deal. And then... Ooh, we're running out of booze. What happened to all our... Oh, we just never made any. Ha 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 ha. Brew, drink from plant, yes. And I only want... The, uh, the proficient brewer doing this. So what I've done here is I've said only the guy who's good at it gets to use this workshop. Because I don't want you guys fucking it up. Stray you has been stung by a honeybee. Oh no. How terrible. <laughs> Chat is being very silly. It sounds like something that'll happen in a Christmas update of Who's Your Daddy? Many stocking placement. Ah! Fill euphoric duty and inebriation. Blissful after sleeping in a very good bedroom. See, now the moods go up. See, a lot of people have went down, down to neutral, but they should start going back up. Um, one of the next things we need to do, we need a place for them to hang out. Uh, let's see. And I do need more of this iron mined out. So, let's make just a little place for them to hang out. And then we'll build... I want you to build for me... 
pause. So I want a rock altar, and I want it made specifically of jet. Click on the magnifying glass. Remember, you can tell them to build things a certain way. If you want things to be color coordinated or something like that. No, Grimoth, we're not hanging out on the surface like a bunch of elves. Bad enough, we have to get the trees up there. So we have the iron... Sh oh, wait, 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 wait. Wait, no, 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 no. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Stop that. Oh, that's bad. Okay. We're going to go into our stone use designation. And we're going to find... Uh, which is that? That's magnetite? We're going to find our magnetite. Uh, I love doing stuff like this. This is where you can... I don't know, the fun is what you make it. I want you to build something out of this magnetite for me. I want you to make an iron altar. Not forged iron, though. Oh, no. That would make too much sense. I want you to carve the very ore itself. I love doing stuff like that. I had a noble that wanted to do some crafting. They're like, oh, they feel bad because I haven't made anything in a while. Things like that. And, uh... So as I gave her a crafts work, workshop, and uh, she liked tetrahedrite ore. So I'm like, okay, well here, I'll I'll, forward, I'll smelt some tetrahedrite, and you can have some copper to play with. No, 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 no. It didn't didn't help her mood. She wanted specifically the ore I wanted to smelt into copper, and to make like figurines and shit out of it. But it made her happy. She's a lot of fun. Uh, I made her her own military squad in full steel armor, and she just kind of plodded around the fortress all day because she was very weak. So I made her wear it all day to try and hopes that it would make her stronger. <laughs> this game's so great. <laughs> so we'll, we'll smooth that so I can put the altar on it. Uh, love this game. So we want this to be a meeting area. <laughs> and then, okay, so we have our smooth spot. So we have our, our offering place. And then we're going to take our zone. We're going to click on it. We're going to click on this button here. We're going to make it a temple. We're not going to have a specific deity, but we're going to start having people, like, let's take a look. They have unmet needs. They want to pray. Eventually that'll turn yellow, and they'll be kind of sad that they haven't been able to pray for a while. So, uh, eventually you'll have enough people uh, that all belong to one deity that they will actually send you a petition that says, Hey, we want our own temple and we want it dedicated to so-and-so. And I don't, I want citizens only, so make sure you click on your details. And they would like instruments, but we don't have any, so that's fine. So, when people don't have anything to do, they'll come pray and, and they'll chat a little bit. Um, having an inn tavern is also good. Once we get some drinks, yeah, our drinks are going back up, which is great. So having something like that would also be good. And I still want more of this. Oh, there's our caravan. Okay, we're not going to do any more jobs while the caravan's coming. Because we will need them to move shit. Uh, let's see. Where are they at? There they are! See, they brought a yak. That's not bad. They brought a yak bull, and it has all these goodies on it. Oh, wouldn't it be terrible if something happened to that yak bull? Um, speaking of, what's in the area? Because I've had caravans bug out because they got attacked by, like, monkeys. And then they just left all their shit behind. I'm like, okay, ooh, they brought another yak. Boy, they brought a lot of shit. Oh, Grimoth said the temple name was interesting. What is our temple name? Uh, the Grim Clam. Yeah, no, that's... Yeah, no, that sounds about right. So your diplomacy, you can get out of any time and go back in, but the expedition leader Sarvesh Tanglethar meets with the outpost liaison Kadal Ralshmib. Uh, I'm your liaison from the Mountain Homes. Let's discuss your situation. There's much to share. So they want to know what we want specifically for next year. And I've had them bring a lot of that and not much else before, but I also think my civilization was failing because I didn't get a lot of migrants on that one. If you ever don't have a lot of migrants, it could be because you don't have a lot of wealth, so people don't see the reason to travel. You might be too far from your civilization, or your civilization may be in decline. Um, so I would like some bituminous coal. 
Uh, there we go. Because you get more coke out of it. Uh, we got plenty of iron, so we'll be good there. What else do we want? We got eggs. Um, let's see. There's not really anything specifically I want. Oh, instruments would be good. Because we could have, uh, yeah, bring it, bring us a little bit of everything and don't make them too fucking expensive. Don't make them out of, like, platinum. Give me some, like, wood shit. Uh, do, 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 do. Where's... Gems. Uncut gems? They probably already have some, but it can be good to have some raw glass around. Uh, every now and then your dwarves will be affected by a fey mood, or they'll become possessed by a spirit that tells them to create something. And they'll go around gathering it up, uh, and they'll go crazy if they can't. So it can be good to have just a lot of random crap. That's one of the reasons I picked those pond turtles earlier. Sometimes you need shells. Uh, so this is, they're gonna jack up the price on all these things, and then they're... They want horn amulets and cloth. Well, go to hell. You're not getting any of that next year. Okay, so let's see what we can trade. Uh, hmm? No. Oh, that's where the wagon was. We don't need that anymore. So, click on your trade depot. Pause, probably. Move goods to and from the depot. This, I don't like... I, I still don't care for this as much as the original system. Because now you have to go through each individual container... Go find your stuff. Um, oh, I have rendered fat. Nice. I need to make sure they don't use that for stuff. Okay, prepared food is really expensive, and like two items have an estimated value of a thousand. Keep in mind, our uh, our appraiser is shit. He's he's bad at his job, so these are all like his best guess. But prepared food is a great way to break the economy, or at least it was originally. Um, these are all my plump helmets, so we don't want to sell them. And then our bins are going to be like our, our finished goods and things. Uh, and our wooden blocks. And all the cloth we want to keep. We're doing pretty good. Ooh, this must be where all the masterwork stuff is. And probably some stuff I want to sell. Oh, yeah, the hunter killed those, <laughs> those toikies. Um, we got our boxes we can start doing. We got some rough stones. Okay, yeah. And sometimes make a bunch of wheelbarrows for them. The problem is uh, these can be heavy, so they may not be able to uh, take a lot of them with them. Then we're going to say the broker's requested, and we're waiting for five items to be brought. Three items to be brought. See, it's nice being right next to the uh, stockpile. Hell, you could probably put your trade depot in your stockpile. That'd really make it a breeze. Uh, the trader is trading at the depot. It'll say what he's doing if he's not at the depot. So we want to trade. Uh, let's see. So I want a way to minimize this because I don't care what's in it. But yeah, we'll probably select all that. Best is to just... It feels like there needs to be more scroll. Like, I am cranking this son of a bitch. Um, we need to make more mugs at some point. Main thing, I just don't want to sell any of my cloth or tools. Yeah, that's a lot of rope that I don't want to sell. Uh, let's see. Oh, my efforts are legend. Well, see, we've done a good job. Okay, they brought some bismuth bars. I don't care. They got some cut gems, which are too expensive. So these you can click on if you know you don't want in them. Oh, raw green glass. Perfect. And some clay. Not really a lot, but we'll take it. Got some ropes. I'm good on that. Metal puzzle box. You opened the box, and I came. They bought a guinea pig and a guinea hen. Guinea pigs are useless. All they do is mess up your pasture. A very nicely made pomegranate wood barrel. Let's see. Honeybee venom. More booze. Ale, specifically, which we're mainly making dwarven wine, so getting ale, beer, or, um, what's the other one? Yeah, it is useful. Uh, you can make meat out of honey, but it's kind of a pain in the ass. Uh, take another pick, sure. It's cheap, too. 25? That's decent quality, too. Slightly better than, than 
neutral. Uh, you can buy a bunch of clothes. Clothes are easy to make once you get your stuff set up, though. Let's see. Wheat flour. Uh, we got ten bags. We're pretty good on bags. I would like some leather, though. I like having a couple cases of leather. Leather are a great way to make clothes. Um, how much is the cloth? The cloth is actually pretty cheap. Our appraiser must be better than one I've had before. <gasps> A whelk, an elk hoof figure of a unicorn. You guys murdered some elves and stole that. Don't lie to me. Another anvil. Take another anvil. Oh, no, I've got iron. I can make anvils. Usually it's harder to get iron. Ooh, voracious cave crawler brains. Emu spleen. Black bear lung. That'll make you strong. More pond turtles. Probably good on plump helmets. Ooh, things we can make wine out of. Things we can make wine out of are good. Uh, thread. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, thread. Don't buy backpacks. Don't buy backpacks. Don't ba make backpacks. There is currently a bug in the game that will mess up your uh, military squads and leave rotting food all over your fort. Cheese is good, but it's really just for making meals. And we've got eggs and stuff like that. The World Without the Gutter. It's a scroll, and I don't know what to do with it. I think you can make a little library or study. Okay, so let's see what they need for trade. So right now they're like, what, what, you didn't offer us anything. Fuck off. Um, so if we do that, it's still red because they're still losing money. This is going to be yellow. It's possible they'll take this trade, but it's a dice roll. And if we add that... Uh, they're making a 5,000 profit, and they're super happy. So this estimated 1,000 is not accurate. <laughs> they have a lot of carrying weight. I wonder if that was a bug, because it felt like they would only have a couple hundred carrying weight before. Oh, that was all the bins. That's the problem. There we go. Yeah, out of 2,000 profit, they're happy. You can also offer things as a gift to the mountain home. Sometimes I do that with artifacts that I don't want. Um... So yeah, they're happy with this trade because it's green. So we'll do that, and then we'll back out. We'll move our other goods back from the trade depot. We can leave them there, but I don't want them to not use the ropes. So we sold like three roasts and a bin of random stone shit for some pretty nice stuff. Okay, so let's check our kitchen stock menu. Um, so don't cook any of... Th don't cook anything you can brew. Just because, like I said, I mentioned earlier at the beginning, it's nice to have that variety. Uh, dwarven rum, that's the other one. I think that's the one you get with uh, sweet pods. But yeah, you can cook all this damn toiki. Don't cook the turkey fat, though, because we can use that to make soap. Nice, that hunter got us some, some early uh, lye. Or not lie, but the things we need to make soap. So let's let's get that done. Okay, now we can go back to digging. Uh, and I want a... Let's see, what are you doing? You're done. You don't have to do this anymore. Uh, so I want rock... Let's see, I want rock thrones. I want them made out of jet. I want rock... Tables. I wish I had a white stone. That'll be fine. Though. We'll make them out of jet too. Oh, migrants arrived. Oh god, we got eight more people. Son of a bitch. New arrival. Mostly kids. Good lord. Five kids, really. Kids hall now, which is nice. Ooh, a gem cutter. <gasps> Wait a second. When did you get here? You're a legendary weaponsmith. Oh, you're the Marks Dwarf. It said you were a Marks Dwarf earlier. You shitbag. That's great. Yeah, kids, uh, if we go to chores, I'll show you in a second, Grimoth. Um, let's see. Oh my god, we have a legendary weaponsmith. An adequate gem cutter. Another miner. Perfect. And a Marks Dwarf. Oh, that's bad. 
That means we'll have conflicting uh, stuff. Adequate mason and trapper. We everyone can use spears. This is we are. This is the most martial civilization of dwarves I've ever seen. Um, let's see. Everyone's praying. Fondness talking with acquaintance. Uh, let's see. Praying to Zirkrim. Uh, they were worried after being not being able to do that. They're interesting to the fine, fine doors. You get a lot more of these little mood moodlet things. Um, if you have like a good carpenter, a good stone worker, uh, which apparently the stone carving is the one we wanted. Yes, cutting is smoothing. Carving is the other one that we want. Okay, so I want a nice... Let's see. Nice. Doesn't have to be a, a massive kind of little dining hall. And uh, actually, we'll just probably just make it a tavern. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. You can't do a meeting hall and a dining room. With a meeting hall, you can make a tavern, which is nice because you can get outsiders if you want to deal with that. Um, let's see. That seemed like a pretty big family, so we probably don't need too many more. Oh, those will be inside each other. There we go. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see, we're at 16. Oh, no, more people showed up too. They weren't done yet. Four, five. Yeah, that should be fine. Okay. Work orders. Bed. Door. Rock door. Just make ten more. It's fine. Never really have too many. And then we'll make another... Grab this stockpile and we'll erase a little three by three square and we'll put another stone worker. Someone to help out our guy make some of the stuff. They won't be as nice as theirs, but they'll be sufficient. Settle down, Grimith. You and your entendres. Okay, so. This is a place I'm going to look at a lot. I don't want stuff floating around in it. Kind of the same thing here. Let's get rid of, get rid of all that stuff. Um, bring back the altar. Where, where's the altar? There it is. See, this is a meeting hall, so everything that doesn't have something to do is hanging out in here. Okay. Nothing like a good brawl. Yeah, yeah, you settle down with that. Uh, let's see. Door. Oh, need more doors. Oh, yeah, chests. I forgot about the chests. Get them sorted out. So, yeah, we've got some of our needs met. We've got plenty of drink. We're actually going down on food a little bit. So if we if food gets alarming, we can forage though. That we're in a great place for foraging. Uh, let's see. Speaking of, let's make this a hospital now. So it's a dormitory and it's also a hospital. But I will need to make someone a chief medical dwarf. Uh, our Sarvesh is a diagnostician, so he can do that. And they need one of these chests. And they will put splints and crutches and cloth and thread in there. Yeah, the makeshift invisible tool you got to be real careful with, Grimoth. It's important to, uh, it's good for deck, for cleaning up your fort so it looks nice and not cluttered. But, uh, 
you don't want to do like a placed artifact or something and hide it. Because <laughs> that's just for you. Everyone else can still see it. Okay. Everything's going pretty good. What else do we need right now? We got lots of booze. Honestly, probably good for booze on a bit if you're not growing anything. Okay. Oh, yeah, we're growing plenty of plump helmets. We can probably start expanding our farms. We could probably make someone else like an apprentice grower to help him out. But see, it's annoying how the game defaults to everyone plants, everyone harvests, because they're bad at it. Like, English, she's great. She loves her work. She's drunk. She has a fantastic bedroom. She really likes her bedroom. She was blissful sleeping in it, and then she was blissful remembering sleeping in it. This dwarf is my spirit animal. <laughs> she would like to go pray, but as soon as she gets done planting some stuff, she should be good. Yeah. She has the ability to focus, good intuition, good memory. She has no sense of vengeance or retribution. Oh, the merchants are leaving. Bye, guys. Have a beautiful time. It's the bumblebees. Oh, no, those are mosquitoes. Where'd the bees go? Oh, there they are. Fun stuff. Um, so we have our craft dwarf. Let's see. Let's make a... Can I make a... Can I make a wooden hive? Let's make a hive. I'll show you how to do that real quick. You need a couple. Uh, let's make another wooden hive. Okay, you should be making... Oh, are we done with beds? No way. He hasn't made that work order yet. Yeah, he hasn't made that work order yet. Sarvesh, get to work. Oh, shit. I've had him at the Trade Depot this entire time. He should probably go take a dump. Yeah, always remember to release your broker. <laughs> Opens hive, mosquitoes erupt in an angry buzzing cloud. Don't you put that on me, lethal. Okay. Uh, how are we doing on tables? Mm, not see. Oh yeah, he didn't make those work orders yet because he's been trapped at the trade depot. That's something that'll happen. Well, we can we can smooth out the new bedrooms. That's fine. And we definitely want the. Uh, tavern to be smoothed out. Good stuff. So we'll let them do that. What's everybody doing? Satisfied at work. Very happy they were drunk. They got to talk for a little bit. Yeah, it's important to give your people a, a little time. I'm not going to do a military in this one. There's a lot of great tutorials for militaries. Let's see how long we've been going. About two hours. This is pretty good. Uh, I could have done things more efficiently. Oh yeah, so... Do some of that metal I was talking about. Uh, let's make a nice boop. We'll make you. You're going to be bars and blocks. And you want, uh, where is it? Bars, other material. And you want your coal. And then you also want, they'll put that in a bin if you have one available. And then you want your metal ore. And you want all your metal ore. And then this one. You want this one to just be metal bars. Okay. And we'll get someone to make coke from bituminous coal. And then life will be good. Oh, we should probably add that on there. Um, let's see, under stone, it'll be economic. There we go. You can have lignite too. Lignite is also will also turn into fuel. So yeah, how are the work are the work orders going now? Yes, the work orders are going now. I just need to get started, and we'll be good to go. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, okay, did we get our hive built? That should be under farming. I haven't done that yet in this new version. Yeah, hive. Boop. And then... 
workshop farming. I should have a second one. So, so you build a hive over that beehive. I think. Like, eventually the hive grows enough that you can split it. And, uh... Put it in other... Oh, turkey blood. Have more more hives than you started with. And you use that to get honey and wax and things like that. A um, lot of birds. Buzzards. Buzzards could be problematic. We have enough Marks Dwarfs. All those Marks Dwarfs should have brought their own crossbows. Let's look for... Weapons. I know if they're set to be hunters, they will. Yeah, no, those are picks. Oh, whoa, wow, you brought a steel crossbow. The material or crossbow doesn't really matter except for whacking things with it, which you typically don't want them to do. Um, let's make some bone bolts. So we do have some dead turkeys. Because they probably don't bring a lot of crossbow bolts with them. someone gets a minute, they'll come do that. Uh, they're busy smoothing floors. Someone's making coal. And then while the hospital is a... Uh, while our dormitory is a hospital now, people will still sleep there if they don't have an assigned bedroom because it is still just a dormitory. Uh, and they'll rest if they're injured. So that's good. Okay. Hmm. My masons get freed up. That's okay. The smoothing will be done and everyone will get a lot more work done. The ones in the little red jacket seem to be children. Oh yeah, I meant to show Grimeth. Under labor and then standing orders and chores. You can show if you want the children doing it and what you want them doing. They'll haul water, they'll haul trail go trade goods, they'll haul animals to pasture, they'll move food around, they'll bury people. Uh, they'll operate levers, which I think they would always operate levers. Um, they'll take care of patients and prisoners. It's nice. They're basically just haulers, but it's nice. It's really kind of streamlines things. You can just turn hauling off on some people, uh, but there's no real good way to do that. Like, if I didn't want this guy to haul, these are all his labors. I can tell him what to do. I can tell him to ignore everything except what I tell him to do, but there are only these jobs unless you go into uh, labor and like make a new work detail, and then it just has this awful little Roman number symbol, which I've stopped doing that because since I've realized that everyone just kind of does everything anyway, it's fine. It's it's fine. Everyone does anything. And there are only a certain things in your fort that you need to be done by a master. Like this this metal there, this weaponsmith, it 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 goes to uh, the legendary weaponsmith. I don't, I don't really give a shit about anyone else. <laughs> he gets to use that forge. And then yeah. Don't we get any doors made yet? Because I need Uh, nope, not yet. Bugger. Bugger nuts. <laughs> nope, there they go. They're making my tables. God bless. And you're making doors. Doors can be whatever. Oh, actually, I should uh, turn tables and chairs off here because I don't want, again, I don't want them dragging them all the way upstairs. I should probably move this stockpile at some point, but that's fine. Um, hmm? Oh, furniture. Jesus. I've always been bad at that. Uh, let's see. Tables and thrones. Okay. Let me stop. Oh, that's the wood we brought with us. And then down here, we've got, hey, we got a big old box of coke. My miner's doing some smelting. Oh, Jesus. So that's the Asmel Atirlogan, the mason, withdraws from society. That's the new one, I think. 
Yeah, that's, they have a strange mood. This could be good. We will follow them and see what they do. They're going to go hijack a crafts workshop. No. Yeah. They're taking the stone crafter. Oh, God bless. Okay. So he's working in secret. He has two stones. Huh. What does he say? I feel so good. He has begun constructing. He's making something out of two pieces of siltstone and maybe that jet. Oh yeah, this is, oh, I was, I mean, I was working on that, but, you know, go ahead. This is why, it's generally good to have doors on all your crafts workshops. Uh, they don't usually take the masonry. That's nice. Usually they'll end up taking a crafters. So Strange Mood is good. As long as they're not possessed, whatever he makes, he should be legendary at it when he's done. The quest for knowledge never ends. They just communed with their god. Oh my god. This could be divine. Children, no, stay and watch. He's working secretly. Um, but you want to check the workshop. It will tell you what they need if they don't have it. Sometimes there will be drawings. Like, since he's working in secret, it would be... Um, there would be drawings. Still, they'd be like, there are drawings of pigtail cloth and things like that. Asmel Atirlogan, Mason, has created Fidgam Turstum, a jet coffer, and he offers it to the scraped seal. Okay, I think that's our faction, maybe? Oh, where'd you put it? Shit, where's it going? We have to make sure to not just randomly put that in someone's room. <laughs> there it is. It's beautiful. This jet coffer, all craft worship, is the highest quality. It is encircled with bands of rectangular jet cabochons and cushioned stiltstone cabochons. On the item is an image of a round cabochon in stiltstone. <laughs> so it's covered in cabochons, and there's an image of cabochons. So I kind of want to know what that's the god of. <laughs> Note in the born, huh? So he's a legendary mason now. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> the chat reactions are pretty great. It is not very valuable, but as an artifact, it is mine. I could give that to our civilization. It's like a little... I don't know. I'll look into it later. Um, note, what is it? note in the born, huh? So something you can do. So I want to make a statue, right? We will celebrate this god for the bounty he has placed upon us. We will make it out of jet. We will make it an image of a legendary or a historical figure, and we want... Noten... Oh wow, he came up easy. Noten the Born is the deity of the unswerving gravel. Noten most often takes the form of a female dwarf and is associated with rebirth. We will create this to celebrate her, and then... Why don't... Where's my legendary mason? Who the hell was it? Uh, Hunter Mason. Yeah, that. Why don't, why don't you make it for me? Honor your deity. He did a good job. Is well designed. See, he's a mason, but it doesn't affect his stone carving. So I don't... I wish they'd make the... The stone crafting, carving, and cutting... They need to distinguish those more. Um, so yeah, that's... That's not your workshop anymore. Thank you, though. You did a great job. Uh, furniture, statue... And we'll put it in our temple. No. Oh. Someone's got to haul it upstairs first. Tragic. <laughs> How are we doing on beds, guys? You got some more beds for me? Hey, look at all them beds. How about doors? You got some doors for me. Ah, God bless it. I 
think we're... S oh, am I missing one? Sometimes your mouse, uh, there's like a little delay or something. When, oh. Hmm? I can build one like that. That's an easy fix. Wall. We'll just build a wall there. It's fine. Okay. Someone build my wall. Oh, he's got a rock. You can always tell when someone has a rock. Hauling mag. Oh, right. Need to turn that off. Stop building shit out of magnetite. <laughs> uh, that's all right. Hey, Blade. What? Yeah, I see chat. What about it? I look at chat all the time. Hmm? Oh, I hit a door there. I see what you're saying. Thank you. Bless. Bless the miners. See, that's what Grimoth was talking about. That can be dangerous. Settle down. See, we were talking about that. We were just talking about that. So, if we go to locations, you can see all your bedrooms, and you can see whether they have people in them. But you can't see the total number of bedrooms, which would be nice. Tragic. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem with doing that before they're done moving their stuff around. I played make-believe. I'm not enjoying this. <laughs> the children in Dwarf Fortress are terrifying, by the way. I had a fort earlier. Uh, I've actually still got the save, but it's it feels unstable. Um, I... Uh... <sighs> so, there are a bunch of troglodytes. I made it to the caverns. And there are a bunch of troglodytes in the caverns. And I have a bunch of roaming adventurers in my fort. So they want to go in the cavern and fight troglodytes and monsters and shit like that. Fine. So a mace dwarf from another civilization is out there murdering things. He's in a martial trance. And then for some reason there are children just in the caverns, like from my fort. They're picking up quarry bushes and stuff like that. Because all your underground stuff grows down there. So they're... Uh... They're just out in the cavern gathering stuff, and they got accosted by the troglodytes and began punching them to death. Like, successfully. The mace dwarf in full iron and steel armor died. The children were all fine. It was like him and three kids versus like ten troglodytes. And they were doing great. Then they just started hauling the bodies upstairs, and you check them, and they're like, ah, they're fine. Have a great time. Remembered being in combat, really enjoyed it. <laughs> like, how are you a dabbling armor user? You are you are four years old. These things are horrifying. Okay, we got plenty of food and booze, but yeah, so we got a nice little starter fortress here. Um, we got that. We need to come in, and we'll probably do some plumbing because what are one thing our uh, farm need, or uh, farm. One thing our hospital needs is it could use a uh, access to water and some soap. So actually, we have the lye and we have some tallow. So we'll just take care of that right now before I log off for a little bit. I gotta go do some shopping before things close. Um, there's our coal. Oh, we need more bins too. They're piling shit on the floor. Why are you guys down in the smelter? Hmm. That's also something we could do. Um, my crafter. Make some rock toys. We have a lot of kids. Toys will, they won't be happy, but it'll make them less upset. Children are to usually get in bad moods. Um, eventually, uh, your expedition leader will reach a high enough rank in Dwarven society, people will come scream at them, and it will make them feel better. Uh, and then 
I need some more bins. And I might need some more. See, I love Wooden. I love Manager. Manager is the best thing. Uh, oh, look at all the trees. They change color. And all the leaves are falling down. I'm so glad we were able to catch that. That's cool. What are these? These are my walnut trees and cherry trees. Are there any cherries on the ground? Cherry flowers. Fisher berries. The hives! Neat. Not ready to be split. Install colony when ready. Gather any products. Uh, destroys the colony. Requires a jug. So, yeah, so don't gather products. Just make bigger. Live honeybees! 15,546! <laughs> uh, and they've got honeybees there, too. Great. Cool. So now we can just make a whole little field of them. That's fun. This game's so good. Practice count. No, no, he knows how many bees are in there. That's easy. That's... Everyone Everyone knows how many bees are in a beehive, Grimoth. Hey, Sniper, didn't see you there, bud. Let's see. Let's make all the soap you can possibly make. So I can go in the hospital. I have it set to pause every time it saves, which is beneficial. Also, if you do a whole bunch of designating... Save and continue playing. The last thing you want in this game is to do a whole bunch of designation or real fiddly work like bedrooms and then have the game crash. Or like do a bunch of plumbing like with magma or water. Let's, see, let's get these doors in here. And then we should be able to do some tables and chairs. That'll be nice. Tables... Chairs. Okay, and then we'll make this a. Um, I kind of have a meeting area. It would be nice for them to have a tavern, though, so we'll just make another meeting area. And then they'll eat at the tables and chairs. So we'll make this a little in tavern. Uh, only our only our people get to live here. And let's put... Ooh, that's what we'll do. Where is it? We'll put the legendary chest in the middle of it. We'll put Fidgum Tarstum in our tavern. And everyone can look at it and talk about it, and they'll feel really happy that it's there. That's great. Oh, and we could use some mugs. Uh, you also get three mugs every time you make one. And not everyone needs their own. You just need enough for people to be able to drink out of. Uh, let's do, 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 do. let's make a little boo stockpile. Uh, let's see. We want food, plant drinks. There we go. We have plenty of barrels and stuff. How are we doing on that? Yeah, we got some empty barrels still. And then we want this stockpile to give items to this stockpile. Oh, no, this stuff. Okay, cool. And then someone will hopefully bring some booze. What are you guys doing down there? We're socializing, euphoric due to inebriation. Um, but yeah, they won't get the legendary dining hall bonus, uh, but I can make one of those later. At least they have a place to, so, to sit and eat and uh, kind of hang out. We got mugs they can drink out of. Hey, and someone brought some booze. So linking stockpiles is a good way to feed your uh, stockpiles deeper in the fort. Like I could make a nice furniture stockpile here. And they would feed it from down up uh, the upper surface area. 
Okay, so we should have our soap. I keep using that hotkey. Uh, that. <laughs> There we go. So if we go in our hospital thing, we should have turkey soap, the best kind of soap. So uh, the only thing we really need is some war water. Oh, the hunter found uh, a deer and promptly murdered it, it looks like. How's that going? Oh, he heard it real bad. Then what, did he fuck off? Who was it? Ton Lorbaum. Ton, where the hell are you? Finish your kill, you fuck. There he is. Oh, he's picking... Oh, he must have ran out of bolts. Tired. What, worried? Do I look worried? Didn't feel anything in conflict. Felt wonder remembering community with Corvus Guildsteel. There should be some bolts up in here. Yeah, pick up equipment. Turkey bone bolts. Okay, so she got like 25 bolts in a quiver still. That's good. And then she's hunting again. Yep. Is that... Why not? Oh, there you go. When she shoot the deer... The deer have... Oh, that deer taking some bolts. Stunned, unconscious, seriously injured. It's not vomiting. She ran out of bolts again. Yep, she's looking for more bolts. <laughs> Just go beat it to death. Uh... Oh, bone bolts are great. Uh, well, it would help if I had a better crafter, but... I mean, I could make real bolts now, too. Actually, I'd probably do that with the copper. Uh, so we have... Tons of fuel. Well, not tons of fuel. We have a good amount of fuel. Uh, man. That's going to be a problem. I really don't want to have to make everything out of charcoal. So we have our fuel. So if we tell them to... Billion bars is just for furniture. Magnetite and tetrahedrite, we'll get silver, iron, and copper out of. Iron and then silver and copper. We can use that to make weapons, bolts, uh, armor. You can make furniture, chains, other anvils, so you can have other metal smithing shops. We'll do that more of that next time. Everyone's loving the tavern, it looks like. I talked to my friend. I was near to an arranged door. It's interesting. Fondness after making friends. Very good bedrooms. Everyone seems pretty stoked. Angry dwelling upon getting in an argument. But oh, someone's performing something. Eat. Socialize. Oh, listening to poetry. But yeah, if you give the dwarves time to like do stuff, they'll make friends. They'll uh, share stories with each other. Because you can go to... Let's see, where are we at? Under... Memories. Oh, that's fun. Um, where is it? Oh, it's skills. If you want to knowledge, they know different poetic forms. They know musical compositions, actual poems. And this is all The Birth of Pukes, a poem. Give me a second. But all this is randomly generated when your world is made. This game's incredible like that. The Birth of Pukes is a poem authored by Lita Avimu. It is an example of the whiskered skins. The work has no particular subject. The writing is clearly organized. Overall, the poetry is passable. The whiskered skins is a poetic riddle intended to express pleasure with the hunt, originating in the unswerving gravel. The rules of the form are applied by poets to produce individual poems which can be recited. The poem is two quintains, a form of parallelism is common throughout the poem in that certain lines sometimes have reversed word orders. The fourth line of each quintain is required to maintain the phrasing of the first line. The third line of each quintain presents a different view of the subject of the first line. The rhyme scheme of the poem is A-A-B-A. -A -A. I was hoping we would get to see the actual birth of pukes. Uh... <laughs> Gerbils and the dankness. This fucking game. 
Oh, God. Oh, because they fired 25 bone crossbow bolts at that deer blade. Then they had to go get more because they're probably not a very good marks dwarf yet. Oh, God. Gerbils in the Dagnus. Example of the Droplet of Glimmering. Jesus Christ. The finale is voiced by the melody of the Slurthras. The Slurthras stays in the wispy low register. This passage features only melodic tones and intervals. We need some instruments. <laughs> How's that deer doing, guys? Uh, yeah, okay. They keep shooting it in the feet and the legs. That's why it's still alive. Goodness. Oh, yeah, the pathing. I, oh, I see what you mean, yeah. I don't know. It's it, it can be kind of weird sometimes. Well, guys, I'm pretty happy with the way things are going. I'm definitely going to come back and do some more of this. Um, and uh, I hope people have been able to learn something and, and enjoy the time we've spent here in Dwarf Fortress. I'll, I'll come back to this one. And we'll do some plumbing and some metal crafting. And we'll look for some more ore. We'll do some exploratory shafts. We'll try to drown the fort. It'll be great. Maybe we'll make a moat. A moat's always fun. I like walling off the outside enclosure. That way I can protect the animals and the trade depot and stuff like that. So maybe we'll get someone started on some blocks. And there's all kinds of good stuff we can do. So, yeah. But that'll do for now. I'll see you guys when we come back.